with Shadow the Rat, and in today's video, I thought I would talk about five misconceptions that new rat owners sometimes have about rats. So the first one is the misconception that rats can live alone. While there are those very, very few rats who do need to live alone, this is very much the exception and not the norm. Rats are a very social species, which is why they make such great pets. However, this also means that they need to live with other members of their own kind, which means that they need to live with other rats. So people who think that they can get just one rat and give it lots of attention and that it'll be fine, of course the rat isn't going to get super depressed and not eat or anything like that. However, the rat's quality of life will be diminished somewhat. You have to think about it. I mean, can we really fit inside a rat's cage? Can we engage with them 24 seven? Can we cuddle in a hammock with them? The answer here is always going to be no. You can't talk to your rats either and you just can't read their body language like another rat could. You can't play with them in that way. So it's not fair to assume that just because you can spend a great portion of your day with your rat that they're not going to be somewhat unhappy. So I would just suggest always getting at least two rats of the same gender. I'd always say that you want to get at least two right from the beginning because I also know that some people will get one rat and then say they plan to get another later on. However, especially if you're a new rat owner, this can be a little difficult because sometimes introducing new rats doesn't go as planned and then you can end up with a situation where you need to figure out how to either introduce two difficult rats or you might end up with two rats in separate cages and it can just become a mess. So it's better just to get a bonded pair or group of rats right from the start. So the next misconception that I sometimes find with new rat owners is about cages. So there's a lot of misinformation about cages out there and a lot of this is due to the fact that pet shops sell really awful cages. To be honest, I have seen very few good cages inside pet shops and many times people will fall for what I call the rat starter kit dilemma which is when you see okay all these things together with a cage of sorts you might see a cage you might see bedding you'll probably see food some toys a tiny wheel other stuff and then this cage will be marketed as a deal for new rat owners and oftentimes not only is this cage horrendous for rats because it's too small in many cases but the food is usually horrible the bedding usually isn't very good the wheel is usually outgrown in just a month or so and Basically, it's just a waste of your money and a waste of your effort because later on you're going to have to get another cage. Now another thing is people often wonder if they can keep their rats in aquariums or if they can keep them in cages with tank toppers or even if they can keep them in DIY bin cages. And while you can technically keep your rats in these, and you've probably seen that feeder breeders do tend to keep their rats in tanks, these types of cages are just very conductive to the buildup of ammonia from your rat's urine, and this can aggravate their very sensitive respiratory tracts and cause things like respiratory infections and other sorts of issues. And considering how prone rats are already to these issues, you really just want to go from the start and just get them a wire cage. Another thing is that people will underestimate the amount of space that a rat cage will take up. Rats Rats need to have a very large cage, at least two cubic feet per rat, and this means that you are going to need a sizable cage, which is usually going to cost quite a bit of money, and it's one of the first starter items that's really going to cost you a lot right off the bat when you're getting rats. Now another misconception that new rat owners sometimes have is that rats are generally hardy pets who don't need the vet. I know that a lot of people seem to think that small animals in general don't need vet trips because they don't get vaccinated, they don't get microchipped and stuff like that. So people will think, okay, I'll never have to take them to the vet and they won't find a vet beforehand. And in many cases, you'll find that, especially if you're getting your rats from a pet store or a feeder breeder, that they actually might come to you already sick. They might look totally healthy, but when they get home, they become sick, or they might just get sick later on. And it's always a good idea to find a vet before you buy any sort of animal, especially if that animal is something like a rat, because rats are considered exotic pets. And because of this, you're going to find that many cat and dog clinics might even refuse to treat them. And if they don't refuse, they might just not know how to treat them. So it's always a good idea to try and find an experienced vet first that will actually be able to help you in case of an emergency. Now the fourth misconception that I find that new rat owners often have is that they think that their rats will either come to them totally tame or that they will tame within the first few hours. So rats have been gaining a reputation of sorts as a very tame and friendly sort of small pet and this is a very well deserved reputation because rats are indeed one of the easier to handle and more interactive small pets out there. However, this doesn't mean that you're not going to have to spend any time taming them. 
Now, if you get your rats from a breeder or even from a shelter where they have either been bred to have very nice and friendly temperaments or where they have been handled for a while, then you might not have an issue. They might already come to you tame and friendly and sociable. But if you're getting your rats from a pet store or from a feeder bin, then you might find that you're going to have to put in a little bit more time taming them. So my fifth and final misconception is on the topic of if rats smell or not. Oftentimes, if you ask a rat owner if the rats smell, they're going to tell you that no, they don't have any odor. However, if I'm being honest here, I have to say that they do smell somewhat. While the rats themselves rarely smell, their urine, feces, and by extension their cage can smell pretty bad, especially if you are a new owner and you're not exactly sure what you need to use to keep the cage nice and fresh. So oftentimes when people get rats, they're going to immediately notice that they do smell a little bit. And I know that for some people, this can be a bit of a surprise. This was a surprise for me. I got rats originally after gerbils and I told my parents that they weren't going to smell that much. I said they were going to be comparable to gerbils because all the posts I looked at said, no, no, rats don't smell. They're absolutely odorless and things like that. And now I know that that is definitely not true. While I'd say that rats don't smell as much as let's say hamsters, they definitely smell a lot more than gerbils. So this is just something you need to be aware of before you get your rats. If animal odor is something that bothers you, I would definitely recommend going to someone's house who actually owns rats just so you can see how the smell affects you and if any other sort of issues are going to pop up in regards to their odor. So that's really all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you would like more information on rat care and trick training, you can visit my website at rattricks.weebly.com. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Bye!